Berber Scree says, if you appreciate my help, then please hit subscribe. Subscribe right here. Subscribe. Oh, yep, right there. Subscribe. And if you like, maybe it would be helpful if you also like. Please like. Thank you very much, says the Berber Scree bird. Hi, this is Mark Kilgore, the bed bug engineer, and believe it or not, you're going to have to take my word for it here, Sosa, the engineering technician dog, is over there. It's a little bit difficult vantage point to achieve, so you're there, and I'm here. I'm going to show you how to make CO2 traps. What I've got here, ingredient-wise, I've got scissors, I've got active dry yeast, I've got thermometer, I've got sugar, I've got climb-up traps, and I've got some bottles, which I already have custom prepared plastic bottles. The only thing that needs to be custom prepared is the top, so I've taken some, uh, this is uh, like you can get, uh, uh, you know, in the fish, the aquarium supplies, this is some tubing of whatever common size and I drilled a hole inside the caps you can see this one a little bit better I drilled a hole inside there fed the tube through and sealed with uh, some kind of like epoxy sealant the inside and also the outside and after they cured up then I tested them for air tightness and there were some of them that were not I had more problems getting these type uh, airtight than this one stands to reason so anyway we're going to prepare up three CO2 traps and uh, the reason why I've selected these bottles is because they're not that easy to tip over this one because it's it's wide and circular this one because it's flat and circular as, a, as opposed to uh, this one because it has a rounded circular edge this one this one to me is not as more round it's more chopped right off there so less easy to tip over that's why these make these bottles make good choices so we're going to get our water to the right temperature. I feel good as long as I have at least 110 degrees and no more than 120. That's about where my comfort range is. And guess what? Ingredient wise or material wise, I guess we'll also have a little spin. So I guess this is a teaspoon here. It's not not a huge one. Anyway, a thermometer I've got to check out the temperature of the water we got coming out here. What have we got? It's up over 100 degrees. And it's at least 105. Looks like we got 110 and climbing. I see uh, like about 118, about 120 degrees, something like that. I'm just going to leave that running on there. I think we've got it straight at 120 degrees. That's good for me. All right. Climb up traps here. This is my personal variation. As far as I know, I invented this. I'll show you what I'm doing here in the end, trust me. Okay, so, the temperature of the water is good. At this point, we're going to uh, make up our mixture. Here is measuring cup. 
Let's let water run in here. Not, not picky about how much. In fact, I'm I'm getting quite a bit. I'm just gonna stick that thermometer in there. I want to see where we are. We're at less than 120 or about 118 degrees. That's good. I'm pulling this out of there. So, without any more time to waste, we're going to throw in uh, some sugar. I'm going to make up th three of these little pockets of uh, this. So I'm going to throw in one, two, three, four, five deals of sugar. Okay, we'll go six. We'll go two for, for each one of these packets here. And pour out just a little bit of water. Because it's going to overflow it like this. Open the active dry yeast. Go ahead and throw them all in there. Check, make sure I got them all, got all of it out. Good enough. Mix our mixture. They kind of like to clump up a little bit. It doesn't have to be mixed up uh, super great. I'm mostly look, looking to try to not get anything clumped up. So I so said you still want a Scooby Snack? Okay, good. Just making sure. All right. All right, good enough. So, we've got like 16 ounces in here, so we're going to try to divide by three vessels. That would be about five and a third ounces each. So, on this first one, let's try to pour until we end up with 11 ounces left. That would be five ounces each. And pour a little bit fast to get it. Okay, 11 ounces I was shooting for. That's about 10 left. Okay, let's shoot for five in here and five in the other one. This is a small hole. So I'm going to kind of shoot it like that. See where we are here. Okay. About five left now. Five ounces and all of those are going in here. And there they go. over and clump to the side. Oh, all my yeast used. Okay. Put the caps on. Careful to not drop the trap and spill.
I got duct tape here wrapped around this thing and and the the end of it I've got sort of doubled over like that to where it creates an easy thing to grab like that now here's where I want it just like that same thing here grab the easy tab I want it about two-thirds of the way down from the bottom of the tape to the bottom of the container in distance same thing here on the largest vessel this one I'll go three-quarters of the way it doesn't matter I just don't want it all the way to the bottom okay done now I'll go ahead and aim for that same 120 degrees hot Oops. I need to get the well wet so it catches dead bugs so how do we avoid getting it wet? Let's use our measuring cup. And pour a little bit of water in each one of these uh, climb up traps. My personal variant, my personal variation on CO2 traps. Okay. Now, replace this in there. It's good. And do you see what I see? That's why I put the water inside the climb up trap. That way I can tell if my trap is producing or not. That way I don't have to sit there and look at my trap and go, hmm, I wonder if I've done right. I wonder, or I wonder if I screw, have screwed up. You'll actually know. If your trap is producing CO2 or not, just by looking at the bubbling. Put a little bit more water in two of these guys. Now, I want I want to say a couple things. Uh, I don't expect that anyone is going to win the war by the use of CO2 traps only especially and not even having these climb ups on the on the legs of their bed are you crazy okay but these are a good add-on in in addition to other methods and uh, I had like I mean these are some some of my bottles maybe not all of them I had like a, a dozen of these things or, or so going I was <laughs> I was going through a decent amount of those packets of active dry yeast and these if I go to bed and I sleep eight hours they're still going to be producing in the morning but not a lot greater than that I'd say these will last about 10-12 hours plus or minus so you set these in various places like corners of your room is a, a great place to do it right next to the doorway on both sides of the door both both sides of the door in and out and both sides of the door left and left in uh, hinge side and the opposite side that'd be nice I mean I like to to put them uh, also close to the legs of the bed you know so hopefully they'll go oh this is a leg of a bed and 
climb up trap, they climb up the side, get caught in the well, and that's it. And, and plus, another reason why I like the water there, look at that rhythm. You hear that? And it sounds to me like, you know, from a stupid bed bug that might be, oh, this, that's, a, that's a guy snoring. I mean, listen to that. that. That's a little snoring sound. I don't know, you know. That, uh, anyway, so that is the deal on CO2 traps, how to make them and my personal variation on uh, putting the water there. And uh, again, I think they'll last you. They're, they're not going to last you. I don't think any of these will still be producing 14 hours from now. That's my guess is that they'll all peter out somewhere around 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 hours from now. Okay, uh, Sosa, my little uh, engineering tech, he's been good. If you think I've been good, then please subscribe for me. And also, here's a decent video. And I think this one's okay. And this one. Alright, is that good, Sosa? Well, Sosa loves you, I love you, and the Lord God Jesus loves you infinitely more. Bye-bye.